Okay, I'm going to continue on. Uh, last time we talked about conditionals and how conditionals were the building blocks for basically selection, uh, selection statements or selection structures. And what we were, how you made it conditional was you made it a combination of relational operators like these here and um, logical operators like the and or the or or the not. Okay, so selection structures, there's three different statements um, that we can use to in C++ to implement selection structures. We have if, if else, and switch statement. Um, if is basically means if some condition is true, then execute some code. If the condition is false, you skip that code, okay? The if else statement says basically if some condition is true, you're going to execute the code. If it's false, then you're going to execute the else part of the statement. And the switch statement, that one is just, it's a list of items, right, that you can select from. Um, one of the examples you look at is like a vending machine. A vending machine saying like, you know, push button one, you get the item in, in uh, slot one. You push item button two, you get an item in slot two, three, and so on. So that's a switch statement. This is like a list of possible um, blocks of code that you could execute, okay? So those are the three basic differences between them. Right. But what do they look like in um, uh, in C or in C++? The if statement, basically you have if some condition, here's where you put your conditional statement. You wanna make some comparison and some logical operations. Then you have a line line of code or in this case, condition, it can also be an expression, right? If it evaluates out the true or false expression, meaning, you know, some math expression or whatever. If it evaluates out the true or false, then that's also um, valid, okay? So condition or expression, it doesn't really matter. Um, or, if, um, yeah. So then in this case, we have a block of code, okay? So we have multiple statements. And depending upon if the condition is true, you execute these or you execute a single statement, okay? And that's essentially it for that. So that's the basic overview. And then this is the basic structure. And in here are valid C++ statements, which we'll take a look at. Okay, so like here's some code, right? If you're, you're reading a variable, if and it's the variable's x, and you check x, is x greater than zero? You print out this message. Or, um, you could also write it like this if you want. You could say you could put curly braces and write a whole sequence of code in here. So this could be like a block of code. If you have just one statement that's executed, this is fine. If you have more than one statement, then you've got to use your block. Um, this is your, your uh, delimiters for the block. You start with an open brace, write all your lines of code. In this case, you only have one. And then you have a closing brace, okay? Okay, so let's, I'm going to go in and um, start Visual Studio so that I can show you these examples that kind of at the same time. So I just go vote, start Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. Um, console app. Okay, next. And then the name. Um, I'll just call this uh, Chapter 3 Examples. How's that? Okay, just something. That would be easy to find. And then I would create, make sure it's on the desktop. And here's the solution name, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so here it starts up. All right. So one of the things I'm gonna do here, and then when I do it all in my code, I'm just gonna say using name space STD. Okay. And then I don't need to write it like this. I can get rid of this code. I'll just leave this blank for now. And let's do this. Let's get rid of all this. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, right? Just to show you this, and then I'll build upon it. Let's say integer x equals 5. So I do a, you know, I declare a variable, type integer, and set it equal to 5, okay? Then I say if x is greater than 0, then display this message, C out, and my redirection arrows. And I'll just say x is greater than how about I just write it out doesn't really matter I could put anything I want in here zero okay 
And then I'll just do C out. End of program. Okay. So when I run it, what do you expect? It's going to come out to be true. And then this line of code would execute. Okay. So let's see what we got. We're going to run it. Um, doesn't like something. Oh, I know what's the problem. I didn't put my semicolon here. Okay, so I have the semicolon at the end of the statement. So what you recognize is like the if and the C out is kind of together. You can actually write this all in the same, this all together on the same line if you want to, if you only have a single um, single line of code. All right, but I forgot my semicolon here, so I'm going to do it again. And it runs. Okay. And then it says X greater than zero, end of program. Okay, so it displayed both of them. I'm also going to do here is I'm going to do the end L, just so it displays it on a new line. And end L, okay? So now if I did this like a minus 5, you know, what do you expect to happen? Of course, I run it. And um, end of program. See, X, now it just displays end of program. It skips this line here. I could also do this if I wanted to, but it's really not going to change anything. Now if I wanted to, well, let me change it. I'll put two lines of code in there. Let me, ch I'll change it this time to show you what the difference is. Now if I put these curly braces, now what's going to happen if x is greater than 0, both of these get displayed. Okay? So I'm going to run it again. Since x is less than 0, nothing is displayed. Okay? Uh, let me also do this. I'll just put this at 5 again just to show you where you'll see both lines displayed. And there's both of them. Okay? One of the things you can do here in your code, and this might be good when it actually, if you run it standalone, but if you want it to have like a, a place for it to stop, if you do system pause, it'll wait for you to like click a key to, to have it continue. So it'll, it'll display the uh, window. It actually does it anyways. So if I do, and I gotta do it twice, okay. Once because it automatically stops and once um, because I need this in here to, to have it that second key. It it depends upon how you have Visual Studio send up. You might need this, okay, in your uh, program. All right, so that's basically that example. Okay, continuing on. Now we have the if else, okay? So we've added this else. And this expression typically is your conditional, although, like I said, you could have a math expression where if it comes out to zero, then it's false. Otherwise, it's going to be true. Okay, but typically we use conditions in here, or conditionals. Okay, so you can write it like this. You can just write one statement. But if you had multiple statements, then you'd put the curly braces around that, meaning that if this is true, whatever's in this block runs, else whatever's over here runs. Okay, so if we go back to that example, go back to the same example code I have, and we'll just modify it slightly to see an example of this. Okay, so back on this program again, I'm going to use an else. So let me just get rid of this so I can oh, I can use the blocks of code. You really, I mean the um, curly brackets to identify a block of code. I'll leave it there. It really doesn't matter. You don't need it, but you could put it in there. So then it says else, and I'll do C out. And in this case, I won't use a block because I only have one line of code. In this case, I really didn't need a block either. So I'll tell you what, I'll remove it. But it really doesn't make any difference. Now I can say x is not greater than 0. No, I didn't say like is. OK. All right, and the same thing. End line, semicolon. All right? So we do that. Save all. Run it. OK, x is greater than 0. Okay, which it was, 5. And then if I just make it minus 5, I run it again. X is not greater than 0. Okay. One more thing here I can do. I can just do it like this. I'll prompt the user to enter number. Okay. So I'll say, C out. Enter a number. And I'll just change this message to number is greater than zero. Number is not greater than zero. Okay. 
So I'll enter a number. And the way to do that is just to CN, read it into X. Okay, so now what it will do, it will prompt the user to enter a number. Okay, and then from that, um, it'll determine whether or not, you know, it's greater than or less than that, uh, zero. Okay, so enter a number, minus one. Number is not greater than zero. Okay, and let me just do another one. Of course, we run it the other way. Um, two, it doesn't matter. Number is greater than zero. Okay, so that's like just checking it real quick. Uh, so you could put curly braces and put another line of code in here if you wanted to, right? And you can try that out. All right, so that's good for that one. Okay, so here's another example. So can you predict, you know, the values of this like M and J and what will happen? Well, let's, I just use dot, dot, dot here to represent, you know, there's other code up here. There's other code down here, right? This is just the core part that we want to look at. But you see M equals three, J equals minus two, X equals five, Y equals three, X is five, Y is three. So this becomes true. So M now becomes four. So if you did like a C out and then did C out, M, it, it would be 4, right? If you did that, M would be equal to 4. Else, you would increase J, so then J would be that. So this part, because of these numbers, this part comes out to be true, okay? And M is now that. So you could use like a C out um, on that to show it, but let me see. I'll just do this. One more here. Let me just copy it, and then I'll just kind of quickly show you what we get uh, let me go to back to our program here okay so in this case I'm not going to do enter a number like that I'm just going to take the code I copied out of here put it in here okay there's my code and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this stuff and I'm just going to say see out M, you know, M equals, and then this will display the contents of M, and then I can do N line, and then I can do C out J equals J N line, right? So I could display the contents of J, so you can see what happens. So if I go and run this, Again, there it is. M's four and J is minus two. Why did that happen? Well, it made a comparison. It saw that X is greater than Y. And then um, um, since X is greater than Y, this is gonna be displayed, okay? So let's also do this. Let's put a, a, um, a logical operator in there. And we'll say, j less than minus three okay so what's going to happen here in this case right see if you can figure it out well x is greater than y that is true but we also need j to be less than minus three and it's not true so when this one runs now what do you expect to happen j will be incremented and then j will become minus one and there it is M still three and J is minus one. Okay, so M was three, so it didn't get changed, and only this executed. Okay, so that's that. Okay, the next one is the switch statement. Okay, and this is the structure of it. You know, you have switch, and then you are conditional expression. This, I actually, um, this should be an expression, meaning that this should evaluate out to some number or some constant. Okay. Typically, we put a variable in here. Usually, you put a variable, and then depending upon you know what the value of that variable is, it'll select some code. Okay. Well, the way this one works is that when it it'll go down and look through and compare whatever the result of this is, and I'll show you it, um, and check. And when it finds a match, it stops. I, I mean, it, when it finds a match, it starts to execute all the code after it. So you have to put break in here, otherwise, it would just execute the next statements as you went along. Okay. But I'll show you an example of that. We'll have a, I'll show you a real quick um, vending machine. Okay, back to 
uh, the code I originally had here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this variable selection. Okay. And set, oh, I'll just leave it out there. I won't initialize it or anything. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to make a vending machine. Enter your selection. And what I'll put in here is one for candy bar. This is in my vending machine. And two, two for chips. Okay, so one or two, basically what you need to enter. All right. Well, my variable is called selection, so I'm just going to do CN selection. Okay. Oh, you know, I forgot my semicolon here. See in selection. I think I'm going to put a switch statement in here. So switch, and the variable I'm going to use, or my expression, is just my variable selection, which is what I already defined here. Okay. So the way our vending machine will work, it'll just display a message if you have a match. So case one, I'm going to do C out. I'll just write the message candy bar. Okay, and I'll do end line. And then I have to put break. Otherwise, it would execute everything. It would just keep executing all the code after this, which is not what I want. So I'm going to do chips. Oh, end line. And, uh, okay. Oh, sorry, didn't do case two here. It automatically indented it for me. Break. And then the last one, if the user entered in something invalid, you call that default. And in this case, you don't need a break at the end, but I'll just say invalid entry. And that should be good. Okay. Okay, so there's my program. And the rest of this stuff, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to leave my system pause at the end. Okay. So there's my program. Here's my selection, selection uh, I'm sorry, my switch statement um, with my selection variable. Okay. So let's go and run it. Okay. One for that. So I'll say one. It displays candy bar okay so what happens is selection is really so whatever's between the parens here is matched with these values okay so selection was one you get candy bar and if i run it again two displays chips and then if i do anything else you know minus two <laughs> invalid entry so it'll capture everything else outside of that okay so that's a really uh that's a brief example of um, using a switch statement, okay? So you can add more and more cases if you want, right? I'm gonna make one more change here and show you how you can do this with um, variables. I'm sorry, not variables, uh, characters. So one, A, and I have to use single quotes, and B, okay? So now it'll be A for candy bar or B for chips. All right, so let me run it again. A. Oh. oh, mistake here. I have to change this, of course, to character data type. Okay, let's try it again. A. And there it is, candy bar. And, oh, run it again. And B. And there's chips. Okay, and the third one, of course, would have given you invalid entry if you entered anything else. All right, so that's another, that's an example of a switch statement. Okay, some more notes on this. Okay, character, so expression must be integer or character, which I showed you. Those are the only two that are valid. Um, keyword case must be followed by a constant. Okay, so that's either a constant character or an integer, right? And you need a break, right? Unless you want all su subsequent statements to be executed, like I did, right? Otherwise, it would just, if you took those breaks out, you would see what happens, okay? But if I just go back here, 
One of the things you can do, or you know where it has statements, you can actually put another switch statement right here and have switch statements inside of other switch statements, okay? So it could be that you enter some more than one variable up here, and then you have like the first switch statement uses the first variable, then the second switch statement uses the second variable, okay? So that's a, it's a good thing to see if you had like a, let's say you had um, a vending machine, you know, that has four selections, one's chips, one's candy bar, I don't know, one's a soda, one is a ice cream, is that you could have two variables, you could say like variable one, uh, you know, maybe it's one A gives you the first one, one B gives you the next one, and two A gives you one, and two B gives you the other one, right? And the way you would do it is that if you have a match here, then you put a switch statement here and here and, and um, another switch statement here, okay? So you can actually embed switch statements inside of other switch statements, right? And we can also do that with the other selection structures. You can put ifs inside of if elses or ifs inside of ifs, or if else is inside of ifs, okay? So you have all that option. All right, okay, so here we got, oh, so here's another example, and you can actually go through and code this one, same thing as I did, basically, right? Uh, you see how I did, I did get, I did, um, you know, I used the redirection operator to get a character in. Here's another choice for you. You could actually do like cn.get and then get read in the character this way. So this is the second choice. And it might be that this is better than the other one, okay, in some cases. The reason is, is that this one would get every single character. The uh, previous one will skip what's called white spaces. White spaces are like if you push the space bar, you hit carriage return, line feed, or you hit enter, you know, anything like that will put a white space in there, okay? So it doesn't read those. But this reads every single character, even white spaces. So you could code this one and try it out if you want, but it's basically like that previous example I did. Okay, so here's one. Let's say that you had if-else statements, right? And you wanted to convert those to switch statements. And this one basically is, so oh, I don't know, it's maybe a four-year um, program and you're identifying students who are in your four-year degree program or a graduate program at university. So if a, if someone enters in their rank equal to one or their rank is equal to two, they're considered to be in lower division. Else, if their rank is three or four, they're in the upper division. And else, in this case, if their rank is five, they're a graduate student. And anything else is, gives you an invalid rate, great, um, rank. This is one way for you to do it. So like what happens here, check these two. If it's one or two, false then you do the else then you check it again is it three or four if it's true you display this and then it goes out to the end if it's false it goes here and checks so one two will give you this one if not you go up here and make this comparison if it's three or four this gets displayed and you're done else if it's a five this gets displayed and you're done or if none of these matched as you went through it, you get a, it's an invalid rank, okay? So what you need to do is go through and convert these to a switch statement, right? So you can like pause here and go and do it. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll do the same thing, okay? So probably pause right here. Okay, so here's my code. Uh, create a very, very integer variable rank, say enter your rank, cn rank. Then I have a switch statement with the variable rank, I do case one and case two. And notice that like there's no break here. So what happens if it finds a match with case one or a match with case two, it's going to display this. Then it breaks out. Or if it's case three and case four, if it gets down to here, matches either one of these, it displays this and breaks. And then case five, do C out. Um, if not, break. And then um, otherwise, invalid entry okay so that's basically it not a lot cleaner you know in this for this particular problem you know a switch works really well you have these exact matches works better than um you know like the if else although you could use if else this is cleaner
Okay. So the summary, you have, uh, you know, top down designs, problem solving approach, starting from the general and working to the specific. Okay. And what you basically do is you start with the problem statement, at the highest level, it's kind of like a pyramid. And as you get closer, you, you detail your design at each level more and more. And, um, you don't really like write the actual C++ or code when you're going through this design. You may write a statement that says like, what do I want to do? Kind of thing. Um, right now, I really haven't used this in all my examples, um, but I will. Um, it can be, it's, you know, it, with real basic examples we have right now, it doesn't matter too much if you do this. But as the design gets more and more complicated, it becomes more and more useful, right? And I did... As part of this chapter, you know, I showed you flow charts. So there are um, some times where flow charts work out well, too, to help you with your design. All right. In general, selection structures allow you to make a decision based on a condition. Okay. Either, you know, select one of, of a multiple pass if it's a switch statement or one of two if it's an if else. Or if it's an if statement, then just execute code or skip it. So we had if, if else and switch. Those were our three selection structures um, in C++. Okay? And that's it for this.